Hey, good afternoon, fellas. It's still the 12th. It's the afternoon. I'm on my way after this to go get the mail out of the mailbox. And uh, that'll be it. Draw, what is that? Raise the drawbridge and fill the moat. Um, can I ask you for a favor? Or I'll tell you what. I'll ask you to consider this. Now, for most of you, you may not know how to hold a knife. So that's the first thing I'm going to cover right here real quickly. Uh, I took what's called a Filipino martial art, and it's called Paquita Tursi. Uh, the guy was, uh, my instructor was in Black Belt Magazine with his instructor. Anyways, the two ways that I think you should hold a knife, uh, one is called Suk Suk, and the other one is called Pakal. All right. This is Suk Suk. And this is a practice knife that doesn't have a, a edge on it. All right. That is Suk Suk. This knife stays just about three or four inches in front of your chin and your non-dominant hand goes out in front of you, all right? Grab the person, stab them, cut, like that, okay? The other thing is called, that sook sook. This is called pakal. You grasp the knife, put your thumb over the, over the hilt, so you can push it down. One of the craziest things you don't want to have happen to you is you to press down on something with your knife here and it slip by and cut your hand open, all right? So this is a stopgap measure. Again, your dominant hand stays a little bit closer to your face. Your non-dominant hand stands out of here. This is a strike like this, a stab backwards, a downward move, and like that. The other thing I'm asking you to consider doing is starting to train your non-dominant hand. I think one of the things you can do easy to help you do this that they taught us how to do is you start brushing your teeth with your non-dominant hand. You start shaving half of your face and finally get to the point to where you're cutting your beard, trimming your beard. You're doing stuff with your non-dominant hand, your left hand, so that if you have to in a fighting situation and this arm is hurt, you can still listen. You can lose these fingers, everything up to your shoulder and and still survive. You can't afford to get hit here in either carotid artery. You can't afford to get hit in this vein under your arm. And anyways, the femoral on the inside of your thigh. So I think it's just as important, which this is Suk Suk. This hand comes up and this is Pakal. It's just as important for you to be able to use your left hand as it is to use your right hand. And that is something that won't cost you a penny. Uh, you can use a stick, you can use a wooden knife, you can make one yourself to practice. Um, you're just up, down, stab. And when you're stabbing, I suggest you stab for the liver. Find out which side of the body the liver is in. Hint, it's on the right side, right below the rib cage. You stab anybody anywhere near the liver and they're going to the ground. The fight is over. All right? Stay safe and healthy. Take care of each other if you can. And if you can't, you have to take care of yourself. It doesn't make sense for you to go through life having one hand that knows everything attached to your body and this hand you can't really do shit with. All right. The other thing is uh, you can do printing A, A, through, A through Z, numbers 1 through 10 with your left hand. So you should be ambidextrous. All right. It'll help you in the long run. And it's something you can do that doesn't cost you any money whatsoever. Love you guys. Just trying to help you. You don't owe me a damn thing. Stay safe and healthy. Take care of each other if you can. And if you can't, you have to take care of yourself. You're my future. Like a fart in a G-string from West Texas, El Paso. I'm out of here. Bye-bye.